when you say illegal immigrant, you just mean anyone who you don't like. That's for, not true. They, for it's all they, they, no, no, yes, you said anybody. Sorry, I anybody don't like you. It right seems like I don't like okay. you. Or wait, you no, 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 no. You can, wait. You think that when it comes to immigration in general as a holistic immigration policy, that the Biden-Harris administration was better than the Trump administration? Yeah, generally, yeah. In what way? Um, in what way? Uh, one, uh, um, Kamala's, um, sorry, uh, Central America Forward uh, movement. She went around to private investors. She asked them for a uh, basic investment in this program, which then went into Central and South America. I think it created like 25 like million jobs there uh How's jobs it? there so you and this and just this conservative be... and this concerted effort was specifically so that people had more opportunities there and didn't feel the need to come to america and i think that's one of like the biggest things at least specifically Kamala did. and then i'm glad that uh, biden got rid of the mpp okay you could say that you think that it's glad that they did that. And I understand that taking the citizens of the United States tax dollar, funneling it through NGOs that get incredibly wealthy to invest in other institutions and in other countries is something that many people find very popular. Um, I don't find it popular that I can't afford eggs or milk anymore. I think that this sort of wasting of our dollars under the auspices of, but we're kind hearted people that are trying to help people around the world proves over and over again to be fraudulent and not the case. And it's actually enriching wealthy people in this country and elsewhere. But even if we take a side, even if I would say, yeah, maybe you're right that Harris and Biden did all this because they're huge hearted people and they really wanna help the people of Central America. The data is the data. If they were doing so great helping people around the world, why were the amount of illegal immigrants coming to this country massively exploding to record levels under the Biden Harris administration. If these sorts, if as a whole, you've isolated one small area, but if their policies were better as a whole and they're investing in all of these countries around the world to ensure that people stay home there because they're making those countries more livable, then why were there so many illegal immigrants coming to the United States under their administration? Um, I'll answer that question, everyone. You, you uh, kind of misrepresent misrepresented uh, Kamala's uh, policy. She didn't uh, funnel private money through, through NGOs. She went to like specifically private investors as was not coming out of tax money. Okay, used, but uh, that, her, they certainly, the they certainly, their plan, let me be clear, their plan certainly wanted to give millions of dollars to NGOs, correct or not? Um, I don't... It, no, it is. It it is. Just... Not only the plan that she's advocating for that she says Trump sabotage was giving millions of dollars to NGOs, but the Biden administration has, in his term, given money through their budgets to NGOs, many of whom are directing illegals in how to what to say and how to get to the country to make sure that they cross the border. No, this was not that. This was a. I'm talking. I understand it. I, 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 I understand. And let me say. That, okay, maybe you're saying that Kamala Harris did a great job because she talked to private investors that went to Central America and put investments in Central America and it didn't do anything with tax dollars. Yeah. Great. That policy clearly was shit because we had record numbers of illegal immigrants. If this was so effective, then why weren't more less illegal immigrants coming? Because the Biden Harris had done such an effective job getting private investment to countries around the world that no one was leaving their homes anymore. Far fewer people were leaving their homes. So again, what you've done, it would be the equivalent of me saying this. If you say, well, I think that Trump didn't do a good job of funding WIC programs, uh, you know, p parents that were having children. He didn't do a good job of funding those sort of programs to help with child care. And I said, but actually in this one city, you know, Know, actually in um you know cincinnati ohio he he did this and you were like okay cool but clearly as a net that's... if we look at the data that's not what it was overall you've isolated one specific incident so i'm asking you a really simple question you've isolated one small policy the numbers were incredible they were at record highs of illegal immigrants that were coming to this country if their policies were so right. effective at sponsoring private mm -hmm. investment around the world to ensure that these countries were more stable at home why was it so much worse under biden harris than it was under trump um so um i would uh, sorry there's definitely an increase in uh legal immigrants i would agree with you that but i think it was like Two hundred thousand, like nothing, uh, nothing like the. Uh, you seem like what are you talking about? Like millions? Like there was somewhat of an increase, but nothing like huge. Uh, it's, I think you're completely over. That's that's amount. that's that's not true at all. Uh, the the numbers I mean, were, so the numbers we were talking about like on average like. 
tens of thousands that were coming during the Trump administration, those numbers were ballooning to like hundreds of thousands a month that were coming across. And those were just the ones that were basically identified. I can get the official data if you want. No, I'm not talking about foreign travelers. I'm talking about people that were crossing the border that were undocumented. So, wait, okay. Are you, you're not talking about, like, actual, like, okay, there's there's two, I think people are them. There's two statistics. There's border encounters. Like, that's, like, the 8 million number that people bring up, like, hundreds, hundreds of thousand. And then there's, like, the Pew Research and the Yale statistics on, like, a uh, number of actual illegal immigrants residing in, in America. And the reason that it's really important to make these two distinctions is because a lot of times immigrants cross the border and then they, just, they, they immediately get caught and immediately get sent back. So, but that's not that's not what make- that that's not what. First off, even if that was true, which it's not, there aren't record levels of sendback, which is why we see record numbers of illegals that are in the country now. Just to look at some of this data. So, if we go back to October 2021, we're seeing numbers like this per month: ninety thousand of illegal border crossings a day. Right. That same month in 2022, 187 thousand. That same month in 2023, 278 thousand. So we're talking near tripling, near tripling yeah, yeah. the amount okay. of illegal okay. border crossers. Why are they even crossing? Because what you seem to be intuiting is Harris and Biden did a phenomenal job of supporting private investment for countries around the world, which would ensure people would stay home. These people are clearly leaving at record levels. And now you're making excuses saying, oh, but trust me, when they come, most of them or a huge portion of them are just being immediately sent back. Why are they fleeing in the first place? You seem to isolate that you thought the Harris-Biden administration was doing a great job despite the numbers. And when I asked, okay, why did you think they were doing good? And you were like, oh, because they were sponsoring private investment in places like Central America that was ensuring that people wouldn't leave. So can you explain then why we had Uh these numbers ballooning to record levels? If we specifically look at the countries which immigrants are mostly coming at, which is tense, uh, at least in South America, I think it's right now like El Salvador, uh, Honduras, and especially Venezuela. And the countries that Kamala Harris invested in, if I'm correct, it was, uh, fuck, it was like Mexico. I think it was specifically like Mexico, uh, El Salvador, and Panama. So if we look at the amount, and, and if, we look at, if we look at the peer research statistics for Mexico, we've actually seen a consistent amount of Mexicans not even uh, coming here, but leaving and the population of Mexicans going down. So we could, we could say that the investment for the specific demographics, which uh, that put in, we did see a decrease in these illegal border crossings and immigration in general from these populations. Okay, so then you're argu- so then if I'm intuiting that and these numbers are all based on how much investments coming from these countries because the numbers have ballooned so much. Come up, they get credit for the countries that are now sending less, but you don't give them any blame for the countries that are sending records more. That's your argument? I like like I would ask you, I I generally not, but I would ask you like what specifically like other than the fact that COVID ended, which meant that uh, we're going, of course, we're going to see like initial large spike in like border crossings, like um, and because a lot of double counting. Like, what do you think that they specifically did? Well, what they've told, what they've said over and over when people like Brett Weinstein went down and asked and other people have gone and asked is, we know that the Biden-Harris administration will accept us. They said on the debate stage that it wouldn't be illegal for us to come. They said on the debate stage that we would get all sorts of benefits, health benefits, education benefits, welfare benefits. And so that's why they're coming. When under Trump, they were afraid to come because they thought that it would be an unworthwhile trip because they would be deported back because he was talking harshly on immigration. Mm -hmm. Under Trump, there were a bunch of examples executive orders that made sure people it stayed in Mexico. Under Biden, he almost immediately, day one, rescinded many of those executive orders, which ensured once the people came to the border that they were unable to go through. Under Biden-Harris, they worked hand-in-hand with NGOs that would talk to these people and tell them the right things they needed to say to come in. We've even seen the Border Patrol lambast the Biden administration, their union lambast, saying that they're basically just giving a blank check for these people to come through and they're hamstringing Border Patrol. Hell, we even saw the Biden-Harris administration and their cohorts in the mainstream media pushed through the hoax that there was a border patrol agent that was whipping an illegal that was trying to cross the border, something that was completely out of context and was used to push. And that person still hasn't ever been apologized to. So he's demoralized the border patrol. He has incentivized the illegals that are coming. And it has resulted and he has downplayed the crisis as they did until it was an election. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So 
Okay, sorry. We need to we need to make our terms correct because I think uh, your your term the terms that you're using you're not ascribing to the right people. So let's uh and I hope you make so there's um asylum seekers. Would you agree with me? There's asylum seekers, illegal immigrants, and people who have or gotten like te temporary protective status or like apply for that, right? Or in which is the visa, right? So uh under the Biden Harris administration, they basically Trump made the asylum um sorry. The asylum requirements way stricter, way harder, which I definitely do not agree with. And he also, and I think I don't think he did anything with TPS. But under Biden, Biden massively expanded uh, our T, uh, the TPS visa, and he also uh, made it easier for people to sorry the asylum the asylum um, statistics easier. So I would accept, and this would be more, like a more factual based statement. There is Biden made it easier for asylum people who are seeking asylum and people who want to get temporary status to come in, but not illegal immigrants, because it does tend that most of these people are trying to come in via legal routes that the Biden- uh, That's Harris not true. Sure. They're not coming through the legal ports of entries that are suggested, and they're being coached to say that they're asylum seekers by NGOs that are being sponsored in large part by our government that are paying them, that are coaching them on the things they need to say to ensure that they get into the country. I'm unpersuaded, the... I'm unpersuaded by the argument that, well, the asylum seekers are different than the illegals because they're going through, and so they happen to get through, and that was expanded by Biden. No, these are still people that shouldn't be in our country that are illegals. And when people are talking about the problems with illegal immigration, which are substantial, it is because the Biden administration and the disastrous policies and virtue signaling they've done that has encouraged these people to come. You saying, ah, sure, he expanded, but now they're legal. These people are illegal because even though it's the same people coming from the same ways, they've now been coached to say, actually, I'm an asylum seeker. So therefore, we don't consider them illegals. Unpersuaded by that. And I think that if you're listening, and you live in one of these cities that's being inundated with illegals that's causing all sorts of economic and cultural misery in your communities right now, I think that you should understand that this is a trick that the Democrats will try to play that's like, oh, no, 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 these people aren't illegals. These people are asylum seekers. So it's totally different, so it's okay. Uh, I completely disagree. I think it's part of the problem. And changing the semantical terms in how we coach them to say what they need to do to get into this country is not persuasive me as an effective policy from the Biden administration. Um, sorry, I, like, sorry, I would have to actually, sorry, uh, I completely disagree with, like, that, the entire thing. Uh, no, first of all, if you knew, like, if you read anything, like, into our asylum law, including, like, the 1948, like, Refugee Act, you would know, like, anybody, uh, uh sorry, Refugee Act, it's section, I think it's, like, 2408, yeah, the Attorney General can set up a system whereby, like, any asylum seeker can come in, regardless of the status or where they are, right, as long as they present themselves within the right time, right? Uh, so no, they don't, asylum seekers, nor people applying for TPS, necessarily have to come in at a port of entry. I don't know where conservatives get this, which is like useless hearsay. Uh, this has been established for like a really long time now. Uh, Why, so weren't no, Why weren't they doing it under Trump? Why weren't they doing it under Trump? Whoa, whoa, give me a sec. And second of all, illegal immigrant is a legal term. So obviously, when you use a legal term incorrectly, I'm going to correct you on it. I'm not being semantical. I'm not using it. No, it is semantical. And I don't care that you say that it's legal. It also has to do, when I say illegal immigrant, I'm talking about people that have no right to be here. They're not, pe and I'm unpersuaded. That's, I'm unpersuaded. That's entirely Listen, subjective, Rob. I, it, it is. You're right. It, it is subjective in the fact that people like you want to inundate our country with people from outside this country because you'll say that you have a big heart but you don't you don't give a shit about the mass no, rapes because it that makes occur. Our... you don't give a shit about the mass right. rapes that occur when these people make this trip you don't give a shit about the coyotes that are exploiting these people you don't care about that you don't care about the poor people that in this country that are no longer getting help because they're now being forced to compete with these people economically you don't give a shit about the communities that are being overwhelmed by these people you don't give a shit about any of that you think that this benefits your side politically and so you play this semantic argument where you're like well technically if we call them asylum seekers, then they're not illegals. That doesn't matter to the people right now in Springfield, Ohio. Or what you're telling me right now is a community of 50 to 60,000 people that have had 20,000 Haitian immigrants being put there, that you think that it's a persuasive argument to say, oh, no, 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 these aren't illegals. These aren't illegals. You see, the Biden administration granted them asylum. So it's all gravy. It's good. Okay, so uh, I'll make my condition like clear. Like, you could just say, I don't like the amount of asylum seekers coming. I don't like the amount of people with TPS. But it's obvious that when people use illegal immigrants, and you'd even said it itself, and then you went like a massive one-minute gish gallop to try and avoid the fact, and you even said it. When you say illegal immigrant, you just mean anyone who you don't like. That's for not true. They, for That's all they, they, no, no, yes, you said anybody. Sorry, I anybody don't like you. It right seems like I don't like you. Okay. Wait, no, 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 no. You can, wait, wait, wait. No, no, I'll, you can I'll say, you can, you can, you can, you can, oh, okay, bro. Okay. 
I don't like if I don't like you. Am I calling you an illegal immigrant? Uh, no. I, so I, then I you misspeak when you say I say anyone I don't like is an illegal immigrant. You misspoke, or you were just wrong. I literally corrected myself a second after that. I meant you said anybody who doesn't have the right to be here. And I'll now do my analogy. You can say anybody who has an H two A visa. You say I don't think people with H two A visas have the right to be here, and you can call them an illegal immigrant using the definition that you gave me. Where did, H2A? H2A? Where did I mention H two A? Where did I mention H two A? I literally oh my, okay. mentioned. I literally yeah. mentioned H two A. Holy shit, Rob! You said that uh, illegal immigrant is anybody who who does not have the right to be here. Mm-hmm. That's literally what you said. I did me. say that. Yes. And I said, and I said hypothetically, anybody could say that's an illegal. Uh, uh, and hypothetically, using that definition, we would say I don't think I, people who have H two A visas have the right to be here, and therefore are illegal immigrants. And I Someone... said that in that situation, and I'm saying what well, you're make the word illegal immigrant means nothing with that definition, Rob. Literally nothing. It's a you legal definition. You can say that. I think. It's, it's I think your definition. Illegal, think, legal. You could say that. I think your definition means nothing when you could literally change the definition of what asylum is to sit your whims. As you've admitted that the Biden administration did, they expanded their definition of what asylum was. What I'm saying is, instead of arguing the semantical term, which you're want to do, what I'm talking about is the net results on the people that are coming across the border and the people that are suffering in this country because there are so many people that are coming across the border. I'm talking about the net result on them. You want to talk semantically about not using the term illegal because you want to have some sort of optic victory that says, oh, we shouldn't call these people illegals. They're asylum seekers. My question to you is, instead of getting bogged down in this semantic argument would you tell the people of springfield ohio actually you're mistaken these people aren't a problem they're not illegals they're asylum seekers do you think that that changing of the semantic term does anything to change the facts that are on the ground uh obviously if they're like sorry if these immigrants are doing such bad things then obviously no and th- in that case i would say hey maybe asylum seekers aren't uh, sorry, maybe taking as many asylum seekers or as many people applying for temporary protection service. Maybe this isn't a good thing. Maybe we shouldn't do, do it. Maybe we should limit the amount of people coming in through these programs. But one thing I want to do is I wouldn't fear monger about immigrants like you and all the Republicans consistently seem to do, misusing terms constantly. And no, it's not a semantical argument to say that the Republicans are constantly fear mongering about immigrants. And again, what you guys are that what you are, you can say we're fear mongering about immigrants. We're not. We're talking about any country. No, we're not. Because fear mongering is a negative connotation. If you want to get semantic is a negative connotation that says that you're saying things that aren't real world impacts because you want to disparage a group for personal reasons. That's not the case. It's similar to saying like transphobia. No, if I'm speaking out against what I see as trans policies when it comes to athletics or something, it doesn't mean I have a fear of trans people. Uh, So the term fear mongering, I think, is only useful as a semantical tool, if you say that it's being, the connotation of it is that it's being given some sort of undue impact. The truth is people like you and the people that you're supporting, like the Biden administration, have lied to us for three plus years saying that there wasn't a crisis. They said that it wasn't a problem, that the problems we saw with legal immigration that people were seeing on the ground were a lie. We saw this going back forth to the previous administration as well. When you had all of these communities, particularly on border towns, that were saying we're being inundated, we're being overwhelmed. And we were told over and over again by by academics, by politicians in the Democratic Party, the Biden-Harris administration. That's not true. Illegal immigrants are great. They culturally enrich the communities they're in. They benefit us economically. We need these people. And so then what happened? Well, some shrewd politicians decided, okay, we'll send them to your communities. We'll send them to Martha's Vineyard. How did that work out? Well, it turns out even in Democratic strongholds, when they're inundated with the similar numbers, in fact, in some cases, like in Martha's Vineyard, 47 or 50 people, I think they were sent, uh, They were called a sanctuary city. They respected illegal immigrants or asylum speakers or whatever term you want to use. They could only manage to deal with those people for 48 hours. And so despite the rhetoric that people like you give that, oh, it's all fear mongering, great people, how dare you disparage them, not taking them in your communities. They're not in Martha's Vineyard. They're not living where the people on Capitol Hill live. I'll take an immigrant, live. dude. I'll take, okay. You will? T- first, no, oh, what have you done? No, what's stopping I'll take an immigrant any day. What's, what's stopping you? What's stopping Yeah. What's stopping me? Dude, yeah. I've, I'm literally helping people immigrate here right now on HUA. So Are that's you? Like, How so? Like, How so? How are you doing that? I I've contacted them from Discord and they want to get here on H. Sorry. Have H- you checked sorry. their background? One visa from, I'm not checking their background. The oh. U.S. government. Okay. Will they? They're, they're doing, doing such a great visas. job. 
They're doing a great job, right? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, are, 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 do you know how any of these systems work? Like, I do. even asylum seekers and people apply for TPS have to get background checks. This is pretty they do, basic. They do such a poor job of that. For example, we find people all the time that are arrested that things didn't show up in their initial background check. Additionally, many of these people are coming from countries where background checks are all but impossible. So there's all sorts of estimations. Yes, it is true that we find people that are blatantly on the terror watch list that sleep, slip through the cracks. But for every one person we catch that slips through the cracks, there certainly have to be countless others that they didn't pick up on. And that's just the like people that they you're, encountered you're at the border. <laughs> then we could go further. We could see specific okay. examples. This same sort of rhetoric was given. It's the exact same sort of rhetoric that was given with the Afghanistan withdrawal. When people like me said, wait a minute, you're just accepting airplanes of people because this was so buffoonish. Has anyone done background checks on them? And yes, said the Biden administration. Yes, we've done background checks before we left them into this country. Then they took them to airplane. They took them to bases in like the Midwest or whatever and let them wander off the base. And then it turned out, whoops, it turns out we didn't vet hardly any of these people or large swaths of them that we didn't that's vet. like so that's such a dishonest frame because in that framing they didn't, literally didn't do any background checks and this one they did and second of all, you so they lied so you admit no, so i just I want to need be, a hard so, so do, i just no, want to i just want to be do, clear wait, wait, so you no, admit no, you admit if the biden administration said we did background checks we vetted these people they lied you're admitting that was a lie if they said that if they said that that was a lie okay so if they lied about but that currently you about. think they're telling the truth when they say trust us we vetted every single person that comes through here we're confident you know, bro, you, Rob Norris, out of anybody would know one lie does not impl uh, <laughs> implicate a conspiracy it's, about immigration. When dude. it is a pattern. Like, well, yes, you can, there's on the ground, you can look at the on the ground reporting from in San Diego from ABC, and they've done a report on this, and they literally like walked you through the process. There's photos and pictures and everything. They have two facilities there. They do back, basic background checks. Everybody has to take the credible fear test. You know, but there's, a, there's a system, there's a process. They're not just letting people in willy nilly. Obviously, some people are going to slip through the cracks. Literally, that happens in literally any kind of program. It should be accounted for. You would have to prove to me that there's a disport, disproportionate amount of people who are uh, like are like criminals not uh, coming to the country and not being like with these background checks. Not individual examples. I don't. I don't have to prove anything to you. You have to prove when we're taking people in in mass numbers that are causing huge amounts of dismay in this country that they have the right to be here, that they are a benefit. And the idea that I'm supposed to believe that this administration, which is telling us we don't have enough people to process at border guards, we don't have enough people there to be able to process these people. You'll admit that's what the Biden administration is saying, correct? Yeah, I would also admit that that's like his biggest failure. I, I, would, I just I, would I just that. want to be clear. You're you're admitting that the Biden Harris administration, including Harris on the debate stage last night, are saying one of the big fixes to this is if we just gave more money to the Border Patrol and to other resources there, we would be able to properly vet people to ensure that there is less of a border crisis. Yes or no? That's one of the things they've said. Um, uh, specifically, I don't know if I I'd have to look more into like the border itself, but specifically like a uh, immigration court. Uh. The, which, which was when the original bill. Um, so your argument is that that. your argument is 100% or at least to obviously nothing's 100%. I'll steal man your argument, but pretty much everyone that's coming across is being vetted. Um, I think the majority of people who come across are being vetted. It's, well, yeah. why would majority? Why would that be helpful? If we leave, by the way, real quick, John Barrett, thank you so much for the two dollar super chat. Oh, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to get those statistics. Like, I see. Well, wait, but how could you have the, statistics we'll who wasn't vetted? For example, like, what's the vetting process look for? So I come from Haiti, right? What's the, and let's say we say, what's the vetting process look for them? Do they check their criminal background records for countries that don't necessarily keep criminal background records? Yeah, they do that. Make sure they're on a terrorist watch list. Okay, yeah. that's it. Oh, well, we don't have a record for your name. Does that person get in? Oh, like they literally don't have identification for their name? Like they don't know who they are? No, they say, my name's Bob Smith. I'm from Haiti. They go, they say, we don't see a record of Bob Smith in Haiti. Okay, you're not on the terror watch list. What happens to that person? Oh, wait, this, this, is that person like providing like a passport or anything? Or no, they, says they don't. Most, a lot of these countries, as you know, a lot of these people that are coming, I would argue, oh, yeah, no, don't yeah, have no. passports. Um, but this is, it's generally most, uh, both in the U.S. and U.K., if an immigrant shows a, fails to show proper identification, they get deported. So your argument is, is so your yes. argument is then implicitly that the vast majority of the people that are coming through have a passport. Uh, some form of identification. 
Like, what kind of form of identification? An official okay. state, whatever country they're coming for, a state-issued identification. It, it, how, it, I'm guessing, like, ID, birth certificate, passport. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't. I, I don't do, know, I like, do specifically. Not, I do not, I do not believe that. I, 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 well, like, I'm sorry. The, I, 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 I just don't. Like, the idea that you're saying, like, let me, let me see you if can, I can do some, some, like, quick research in this. Uh. Like ahead, you can, you can look at the, you... you can you can look at like you can the, once again you can look at the encounter statistics. Cool, they don't really tell us anything about like the actual number of the immigrants. But then we look at the peer research. It's like okay, it's like two hundred thousand. Like I can confirm two hundred thousand Im illegal immigrants came in during like Biden's administration, right? Uh, nothing like nothing like the like once again nothing like what you've been saying. Like oh, there's so many there's huge numbers are coming in. They're trying to like take over or whatever, right? And we can look at you can look at asylum. You can look at TPS. I think it's like. 2.5 million some like people coming in for dps like and the majority of these immigrants like the majority of them who come in they either get expelled or deported like it's either or. even under biden under title eight the number of expulsions was still quite high it is undoubtable that not only of it so there, there's two things to say about this although the expulsions would be are the expulsion percentages higher than they were under trump oh sorry let me let me check that real quick. I want to be accurate, so let me check in my research doc real quick. So, like, you'd understand the question I'm asking. For example, if you know, thirty uh, percent yeah, of the people yeah. that came that were encountered were expelled under Trump, is that number higher under Biden? And I just yeah. want to be clear: the idea that these people are properly vetted. We just had data that came out, just focused on children alone, that said that they've lost count of some three hundred thousand children. So the idea that it's like, oh, no, no, these people are all being properly vetted and keeping track of is nonsensical. Because surely the people that they would be keeping the best track on would be helpless children, correct? Like, I have, I, I don't know about that, like, data specifically. <laughs> okay. But I find the idea laughable that's like, oh, they vet these people, they know where they're at, they're all people that have forms of ID. Uh, I think it's laughable. I think it is. In fact, oh, they still, see. if that was the case, they're still, they've been saying for years that the number of undocumented people here, I call them illegals, would be 11 million, when the real number is likely much higher than double that amount. That's how off they are. So the idea that this is like some thorough process where people are being thoroughly vetted, which yes, isn't true. Yeah, the, the percentage is higher. Okay, so what are the percentages? You understand why this isn't going to help? Yes? You don't? No. Is okay. there some reason? Is yes. There, like, okay, so this data, entirety? just a cursory look without looking at how they get this data or anything like that. First off, it only goes from April, or it only goes from April 2020, right, to March of 2022, correct? So that's yeah. obviously not giving us an accurate picture. Uh, look at the percentage of the app, the apprehensions to expulsions. Yeah. Under you that said that sense. there was a higher percentage under Biden than Trump. So let's what, were look you saying at, in ratio. Yes, to like that's how I was quite. I was quite clear. Right. I was quite clear. I said, was I thought the you meant there like, no, 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 no. Okay. Maybe you thought, but I think I was clear to the audience that what I was asking for was 30% of the people were expelled under Trump, but under Biden was that number higher. So yes, they're running into more people. It used to be, we saw a month, 60,000 people at the border, but they expelled 30% of it. Now they see 300,000 people at the border, but they expel 40% of them. And you said, yes, the percentage of expulsions is higher. Okay, so we can see, for example, in April of 2020, it looks like damn near a 95, just, let, yeah. let me finish, it looks like a 95% yeah. expulsion rate. Then when we go to the Biden years, we're seeing that the expulsion rate in some places is less than 50%. So when we have the the percentage of the expulsion rate that's significantly gone down, and you could see the mass increase in encounters, you could literally see if you're just looking at the green, these are people that were apprehended and then allowed into the country that we're literally okay. talking about the problem magnifying by more than 10 times on the average of these years of Trump than the average of these years of Biden. And I believe that 2020, the end of 2022 and 2023 were actually worse. So the very graph that you've presented disproves your 
your assertion okay, that the percentage, no, must- let me finish real quick, that the percentage exposure were higher. And it, it literally illustrates and magnifies how bad the point is, which although there were a lot of people, yes, you're right, more people were being expelled, but percentage wise, there was far less and look at how many people were being left in. Yeah, so the sorry, data completely uh, yeah, just, dismantles I, I what you're pointing you. Holy Sorry. shit. Sorry. I compl- I misunderstood you. Uh, yeah, no. It doesn't really affect my argument anyways. Of course uh, it does. Like, what's what, what? No, 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 not whatsoever. Like, I'm okay with, like, the increase in immigration. That's right. Hey, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'll give right. you the last word here, but I do have other people. It would be unfair. I think you could agree. I'd be happy to talk to you about this in the future. I enjoyed the call. I really did. But you yeah, do understand yeah. I got to get to other callers. So I'll give you the last yeah. word on it. Um, uh, uh, I'll say my okay, final yeah. piece. I'll say my final piece real quick, and then give you the last word. Okay. I think this shows that the problem, even that data, shows just how magnified the problem was. Semantic arguments about whether this is legal or not. Uh, it is laughable to say that the border has been better under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris than it was under Trump. And I'm glad that people like the caller here make this argument because it shows to the average person just how disingenuous these sorts of arguments were. Not just on the border, but the same arguments that you'll see with the economy and foreign policy and other issues as well. Trying to gaslight people. People that the border was better, that the border policy was better under a Biden-Harris administration is absolutely laughable. It just is. And the data backs it up, as you see just there. Yeah. So generally, I think the border policy still under Kamala and Biden is better. I think I, I didn't get to go over like specifically why and everything in this debate, but I'll give like a quick summary. Uh, Biden created something called, sorry, Trump created something called the MPP, Migration Protection Protocols, most commonly known as the uh, Stay in Mexico policy. Uh, basically, under this policy, there was like increased a lot of asylum seekers had to stay in border camps while they were waiting for their processes, uh, for their asylum cases to be processed. Uh, under this, we saw like a lot of increased murder, sexual assault, rape under under the uh, under Trump administration. So I'm glad that Biden opened it back up. Thus, ultimately, asylum is a system to help people who are in need of protection, and and Trump completely violated that. Uh, with that, we can talk about the numerous like. Um, violations of international law that Trump did, and not very, not very good, especially can, sir, uh, sorry, since, since I believe in, like, the rule law and shit, uh, sorry, um, I don't think I was whatsoever being semantical when I talk about illegal immigrants. It's important to have defined legal terms when we're talking about the subject, so we know who and what we're talking about, instead of just referring to everything as illegal immigrants, because it just sounds scarier to the audience, or it's not being disingenuous whatsoever. Hey, man, I do appreciate the call. Thanks so much. I know it's not always easy to call in. I thought you sounded pretty good compared to the majority of people I talk. Clearly, I disagree with you, but I did enjoy the call. I know it it gets a little chippy, but I don't mean anything by it. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you'll call back in sometime. 